Hi there. My name is Joost van der Schee and I'm excited to finally tell you about Hugo Bricks, or more precisely, how I created a website with stackable content blocks in Hugo. I want to start with thanking the Cloud Cannon team for having me on this conference and thanking you for tuning in. Let's start with the problem. Pages in modern websites often consist of content blocks that are stacked on top of each other. They may have different content and different background colors. This requires you to split your page into separate parts. However, your typical Hugo page looks something like this, where you have a paragraph, maybe a short code, and maybe another paragraph. I use short codes to split the content into blocks with the yellow things. They open and close like HTML tags and they have markdown content inside. Here you can see I've opened the title brick, put some markdown inside and closed the title brick. Directly below that, I open a call to action brick in which I could put my next content. This concept, which I called Hugo Bricks, consists of pretty basic Hugo functionality. Short codes with inner content, as you've seen in a previous slide. These bricks are stackable, like Lego. What is the difference between a brick and a short code, you may wonder? Well, there's no difference. But if you want to know, short codes are placing reusable content in a kind of an inline way, say in between two paragraphs. An example of a short code is a video. Bricks, however, are complete sets of content. An example of a brick is a call to action block. I bet this concept of content wrapped in short codes looks familiar to you, and that's not strange. It is similar to what WordPress has been using for years, both in custom page builders and in Gutenberg blocks. Here's a simple Gutenberg block for comparison. It looks similar, right? I took this concept one step further and made a complete demo website, actually a theme, that showcases this concept. And before you ask, yes, I made the theme open source and you can download it from GitHub. But let's take it for a spin first. This is the Hugo Bricks website. The homepage has several bricks. This is the introduction brick, the image brick with alternative background color, another image brick, a reviews brick, a features brick, a pricing brick, and a call to action brick. And the call to action brick is used on multiple pages. Therefore, it uses the default content. We have an about page. And in the about page, you can see this call to action brick again. We have an elements page with all elements in this theme, headings, buttons, lists, images, a map, forms, tabs, video, audio, frequently asked questions, and the gallery with a light box. And we have different header styles, and different page layouts. We have a Teams page, A contact us page with the contact us brick and a map brick and a frequently asked questions brick. There's a 404 brick with a neat, neat uh, dog. And then there's the documentation. The documentation is both the documentation of this theme and it is also a way to create your own documentation within this team. So if you want to use this team for a documentation website, you can use it using the docs section and separate markdown files. It will automatically generate this out of collapsing menu. Then there's a blog and you can load, specify how many of these to load. It's currently three. You can load more if you want to and you can filter them with tags. And each of these 
um, blogs has a single layout that looks like this. And you can link back to the tag, in this case performance or gem stack. That's it. Although you may think it looks great, you should realize that content editors must be able and willing to use shortcodes in their content. You either have to learn the brick names as a content editor or use a CMS with shortcode support, like the one of Cloud Cannon. And if you do, you'll get a fast loading website, 15 bricks with more to come, and a theme that is easy customizable. Some Yugo fanatics might wonder what code makes this all happen. So let's take a quick look under the hood. The inner content of the short code gets stored in a variable called inner. If this variable is empty or nil, the code will try to find the corresponding default content and put its content in the inner variable. Finally, the variable is outputted on the screen and may be wrapped in some fancy HTML wrapper. That's all. Not too bad, is it? This is what such a default content file looks like. You store it in a bricks folder. Pretty straightforward if you ask me. Before I sign off, I want to thank two people in particular. Phoenix from Librebits and Mehedi from Xeon Studio. Phoenix, you inspired me to write this code and Mehedi, your awesome MIT licensed Yugo Play theme has been a great inspiration. Furthermore, the licenses of all images and icons can be found in the README on GitHub. I want to thank you all for your attention. And if you want to learn more, check out the Hugo Bricks code at GitHub. You can also leave an issue there. Signing off from Amsterdam, have a great day and a good conference.